Now the bank module can be a bit complicated, a bit like the invoice module, there's a lot to take in, so I'll go as slowly as I can and I'll try and go over things a couple of times. So this is your list of bank accounts. I've showed you how to view their records by double clicking. You have the activity tab just like on all the other records we've used so far. Details you can edit, account details you can edit. To create a new bank account, click new at the top left. Put in the name. So let's put in Santander Savings Account. It gives you your reference automatically just like it does with suppliers, customers and nominal records. Account type, you can choose check account, credit card account or cash account. Let's use check account. Leave no bank reconciliation unticked unless there will be no bank reconciliation but the majority of accounts will have. Click next. Put in the account number, account name, and the rest of these bank details. Click next. You have some further bank details, the bank name and bank address. This would be usually be the bank address that your sort code is registered at. Contact details for the bank. You might have a an account manager, bank account manager to put in there and then open and balance, leave at no, click create. So let's do one of them again. We've got Santander savings account now. Let's put another one in. Let's put in a HSBC savings account. Reference automatically, check account, that's fine. Pin the account details, the bank details bank contact details, no open imbalance, create. So we have these two accounts here. If we need to delete one of these, let's delete this HSBC savings account. Just double click and click delete, confirm yes. And that is now gone. Just like the other accounts we've created in nominal ledger, customers and suppliers, you can't delete an account once there are transactions booked to it. So there are a number of icons at the top here. This first one next to new, so the second one along, if you click record, it just brings up the same record as if we were to double click, like so. The next button on is reconcile. Now you may not deal with bank reconciliations and we won't cover bank reconciliations in this course because this really just covers the basics of SAGE. I do do another course, um, a very short course on how to do bank reconciliations and what they are. Quite a lot of bookkeepers and business accountants will just leave the reconciliation up to the accountant at the year end. But like I said, if you want to cover bank reconciliations, look at my, my next course. Now these next four buttons along can be the confusing buttons um, for people learning SAGE and using SAGE. You have payment, supplier, receipt and customer. Okay. So payment is used when money has gone out of the bank to someone who is not on the supplier ledger, so someone who's not a credit supplier. And this will make more sense as we go through these videos. Supplier is a payment we make to someone on the sales, on the supplier ledger, on the purchase ledger. Receipt is money that we are receiving into a bank account that is not on the sales ledger, the customer ledger, the customer module. And then the customer icon is for money we're receiving into a bank account for someone who is on the customer ledger. Now let me give an example of this. You may use the payment button if you have a company credit card and you have interest. A payment of interest on this account 
because you wouldn't necessarily put your credit card supplier as a credit supplier, receive an invoice from them, and then track that money that you owe and then pay it off through the purchase ledger. But you would use the supplier button for someone who is on the purchase ledger, someone like McNally Computer Supplies. So we click supply with them putting their details there and I'll cover that soon. So taking the interest example again, we may receive interest on our Santander savings account. We wouldn't have the Santander down as a customer who we invoice and then receive interest from. You have to excuse me, my nose is a bit blocked. Um, but we, so, you know, interest we receive that we're not invoicing, but we would use the customer icon for someone like Stevenson and Smith who we've used a few times in these videos there for a Dell computer that we've sold them okay now hopefully if I've just confused you hopefully this will make a bit more sense as we carry on so first of all our current account at Barclays say we have a payment on the 5th or the 6th and this is coming from the bank statements say it's a double D a reference direct debit and then under nominal code we go 79 bank charges 7901 and then we can put annual bank charge which was 30 pounds and there was no VAT on that so it's T1 automatically, so it's saying we should have six pound of VAT, but let's change that to T9, so it's zero. So there's no VAT on that bank charge. Let's do another one. So let's do a different bank account this time. So let's stay on the same screen. Our account references are down here. So this time, let's do the deposit account. So one, two, ten. HSBC deposit account put the date in you might have some sort of funny reference to go in there like that and this time let's put let's see there might be something we can let's do Bank interest paid, so bank interest um, for say July. This is just an example, you know, this may not necessarily be what you would do, um, but this is how you work the bank payments screen. And so the interest was for 73 and T9 no VAT on interest okay you then click save and if you watch the balance of these accounts they'll go down slightly like so because you've just made payments from them so hopefully that has made sense